mechanical failure, corrosion, and human error all contribute to pipeline incidents. Third-party damage is one form of a pipeline incident that is virtually 100% avoidable. When excavators call 811 or contact their local one call center online, the utilities in the vicinity of the excavation respond within a two or three business day time frame, and utility personnel equipped with electronic instruments mark the location of their underground pipes or cables. Once the pipeline operator receives the message from the one call center that excavation is going to take place near the pipeline, they'll send out technicians with electronic instruments and probes to verify the exact location of the pipeline. All state damage prevention laws require the use of hand digging within a certain buffer zone from the pipeline. Pipeline personnel present at excavations near the pipeline will insist on hand digging that will not damage pipeline coating. Under the direction of pipeline personnel, vacuum excavation is an excellent means of exposing pipelines. The three most common hazardous products transported by pipeline include natural gas, natural gas liquids, and petroleum products. Every pipeline marker is going to contain three important pieces of information. The name of the operating company, the type of product being carried by the pipeline, and a 24-7 emergency number. One place you'll often see pipeline markers are at road crossings. And because you only see one set of markers does not mean that there are not multiple pipelines present. When you see pipeline markers on both sides of the road, there's no guarantee that the pipeline runs directly from one marker to the other. That's why calling 811 is so important because the pipeline operator's technician will mark the exact location of the pipeline where it crosses underneath the road. While pipeline markers signify there are pipelines nearby, using markers as a replacement for contacting the 811 center is a deadly idea. Assumptions regarding pipeline location based on visual observation of pipeline markers have resulted in more than a few horrific accidents. Pipeline right-of-ways come in various widths. They can be as narrow as 25 feet. They could be as wide as 150 feet. And the pipelines aren't necessarily always going to be right in the center of the right-of-way. If excavation is going to occur anywhere close to the pipeline, the pipeline operator may want to be present to observe your excavation. Any excavation that's going to be done on an emergency basis needs to wait for the pipeliner to come out because the emergency could be compounded by striking a pipeline. The pipeline company will want to know if you plan on excavating within a certain buffer of the center of their pipeline marks. In order to assist with safe excavation, pipeline operators may choose to be present and observe your excavation. And lastly, if for whatever reason the marks are no longer there, stop and wait for the pipeliner to come back and remark his pipeline. Keep in mind the power of pipelines. One mistake could really cost you a lot. Calling 811 will help you prevent the need to call 911. Most of the products carried by pipelines are hydrocarbons, but there are non-hydrocarbon products that are also carried by pipelines, such as anhydrous ammonia and carbon dioxide. Natural gas is lighter than air and is combustible in approximately a range of 5% on the low side and 15% on the high side. Natural gas liquids include propane, butane, combinations of propane and butane, and natural gasoline. These products are liquids under pipeline pressure, but if they're released to atmosphere, they are heavier than air vapors. Although a liquid under pipeline pressure, leaking propane is a heavier than air gas when it escapes. 
It has an explosive range of 2.1% on the low end to 9.5% on the high end. Any concentration of propane and air in those mixtures will be combustible. The vapor of crude oil gives us a couple of reasons to be worried. One is it's combustible. Crude oil vapor between roughly 1% and 7% vapor and air will be combustible. Crude oil vapor is also heavier than air, so it's going to puddle. In addition to the vapor of other products carried by pipeline, crude oil vapor may contain hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is four times as toxic as carbon monoxide. Crude oil comes into the refinery via pipeline. Coming out of the refinery are products such as gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, kerosene, and heating oil. A single pipeline can carry multiple products, one after the other. This is known as product batching. Suppose the first half of these train cars are carrying diesel fuel and the second half of the train cars are carrying kerosene. This would illustrate product batching. If there's a refined products pipeline release, the products may change during the course of the release. Gasoline vapor is heavier than air. It has an explosive range of 1.4% on the low end to 7.6% on the high end. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a product used in enhanced oil recovery applications. CO2 is dense and will collect in low-lying areas, displacing air. Although not combustible, leaking heavier than air carbon dioxide vapors may cause asphyxiation. Leaking pipeline vapors may replace air needed to breathe, raising the potential for death by asphyxiation. Anhydrous ammonia is produced at refineries and is shipped via pipeline to truck terminals located in agricultural areas. It is a gas in the pipeline and a lighter than air vapor with a strong, repugnant, naturally occurring odor when released. Anhydrous ammonia is toxic and requires the use of respirators when working with the product. All combustible vapors, whether lighter than air or heavier than air, can travel below ground in sewers, field tile, or any other underground conduit. Dirt blowing, a vapor cloud, bubbling water, dead vegetation, or frozen ground Pools of liquid on the ground or an oily sheen on water surfaces are all indications of a pipeline release. Although escaping gas may be cold enough to condense water vapor from the air into a visible fog, it's important to realize that there may be much more gas present beyond the fog. If you hear a loud roar or hissing sounds, those are ways to detect a pipeline leak. Natural gas transported by interstate pipeline companies is unodorized. So if there's a pipeline release, smell isn't going to be one of the ways to detect it. A gate station, such as the one behind us, is the point where the distribution company takes natural gas from the pipeline company. Here, the natural gas is odorized, and that odorization becomes the customer's leak detector. Most people are capable of smelling natural gas odorant in a concentration in the part per million range. Leaking propane vapor will not be detected by smell because the propane is not odorized until it reaches the truck terminal. Although hydrogen sulfide has a very distinct rotten egg smell, the human nose quickly becomes fatigued to that smell. This is a vent. You'll oftentimes see these at railroad crossings or busy highway crossings, there's a pipe that is an encasement pipe around the steel pipeline. And that encasement pipe is attached to the vents on either side of the railroad track. That way, if there's a leak on the pipeline underneath the railroad track, it's detectable here at the vent. The main thing that we need for you to do to keep yourself and your crew safe is to make sure that they get away from the leak. 
Not only is it common sense, but it is federal law that you contact 911 whenever a pipeline damage has resulted in a release of a hazardous product. You'll need to contact the pipeline operator after calling 911. If no markers are present and you are unsure about the owner of the pipeline, your state's one call center may help. When contacting the pipeline owner, be sure to give the precise location of the damage, starting with the state and the county. Today, pipeline damages still occur when operators of excavation equipment do not use 811. Aerial pipeline markers serve the same purpose as the little green signs on the side of an interstate highway. They're mile markers. If you ever need to call 911 to report a pipeline incident, one of these things is around. Use this number. Don't create a static charge by attempting to squeeze off plastic distribution natural gas piping. Don't ever operate pipeline equipment, such as this valve. You may think it's going to be helpful in that it will stop the leak, but you may compound your problems. You may be faced with a worse situation than if you never operated the valve to begin with. Remember, if you strike a pipeline resulting in a pipeline product release, you must call 911. C14 DC 13 engine, 61 engine, 66 engine, 65 truck, 65 engine, 62 engine, 64 medic, 32 rusty, 21 metro AC. Tragic excavation damages involving pipelines usually don't occur just because one thing went wrong. They occur when a multitude of things all go wrong at the same time. If the pipeline is struck during excavation and the only thing that happens is that the coating has been nicked. That's still a very serious thing. Pipeline operators got to make sure that they're aware of any coating damage along their pipeline because a coating damage today might be a point of a release of a hazardous product tomorrow. This is a protective coating that has been scraped off a pipeline. Although the pipe itself may appear to be undamaged, the pipeline operator must be notified of any type of coating damage. That location, where metal now touches earth, will be a focal point for corrosion. Although safe now, that spot may result in a hole in the pipe and tragic events could occur. Besides coating damage, there are a few other things that excavators need to report when they become aware of a damage. Test station wires and tracer wires. Tracer wires are the only way plastic natural gas distribution pipe can be located. If they are cut and buried, the gas company will have problems locating that pipe in the future. This is a test station. It's a place where the corrosion technician for the pipeline company will test the effectiveness of the cathodic protection system. But it's also a place where the pipeline locating technician can come with his instrument and apply a signal to the pipeline so it can be located in front of excavation. Smart pigs can detect internal corrosion, external corrosion, even where gouges have been placed on the pipeline by excavating equipment. Smart pigs are launched at locations similar to this. The pig flows with the product, gathering valuable information about the pipe's condition as it moves along. Pipeline operators patrol their systems looking for unauthorized excavation, leaks, or activities that may compromise pipeline safety. Some pipeline operators patrol their lines on the ground, while other pipeline operators perform aerial surveys. A damaged leaking pipeline could be a life or death situation not just for your crew, but for other people nearby. Your role in evacuation of those people, its importance can't be understated. Each state has a different set of one call requirements. It's important to know the law in the state in which you're excavating. Safe excavation requires the diligence and knowledge on behalf of the excavator, just as it does the pipeline operator. Safe excavation begins with 811, but it's completed through teamwork and communication. Thank you for watching Pipeline Safety. 
Let's be safe and responsible together.